Today we are going to talk about electromagnets, solenoids, and relays. So we've talked previously about inductors. We talked about the properties of inductors. So a quick review, we have a coil of wire, which we call an inductor. And if we push a current of electricity into that coil of wire, what happens? Well, when you have electrical current, you have a magnetic field. So as we push electricity into that wire, we get a magnetic field that builds. But inside the inductor, the magnetic field from one turn will move across the adjacent turns, and that moving magnetic field induces a current that pushes the opposite direction. So when we try to push current into an inductor, the inductor pushes back. But after a while, that magnetic field stops moving. It only pushes back when the magnetic field is building. Once it is built and stable, it stops pushing, and so the current goes right on through. If we try to increase the current, it pushes back momentarily, but then lets it through. Now if we try to decrease the current or stop the current, that magnetic field collapses and now it's moving the opposite direction and moving across these coils induces a current in the same direction and so tries to keep the current moving. So a coil of wire or an inductor has a property that it acts sort of like a flywheel. A flywheel is hard to get going, but once it's going, it's easy to keep going. But then once it's going, it's hard to stop. So it stores energy and uh, the magnetic field of, around an inductor stores energy and releases it in a way that's very similar to how a flywheel does it. So it's basically the flywheel of electronics. But we're talking about magnetic fields. Hey, wait a second. When I have a current flowing through an inductor, I have a magnetic field around it. Sort of like a bar magnet has a magnetic field around it. Looks very similar to the magnetic field around an inductor. When we have a current going through an inductor, does it act like a magnet? That's called an electromagnet. As a matter of fact, the properties of inductance were discovered by Michael Faraday and Joseph Henry when they were playing with electromagnets and discovered the properties with induction and mutual induction. We've already talked about induction. Mutual induction we'll talk about when we get to transformers. So a coil of wire with a current going through it is a magnet. That's an electromagnet. You can make one fairly easily. Just wrap some wire around a nail or something, hook it up to a battery, and here's a little quick demonstration. Hook it up to the battery, becomes a magnet, disconnect it, let's go. And so that's an electromagnet. So we have a magnet we can turn on and turn off. How useful is that? Well, we can use it to pick up things and move them around, or we can use it to actuate things. And so we have in electronics, electromagnetic actuators. I'm going to do a little definition thing here. The question is, what is a solenoid? Well, it depends on who you're talking to. If you're talking to a physicist, he will say this is a solenoid. If we put a, some iron inside it, it concentrates the magnetic field, makes it a better solenoid, makes, uh, gives it more inductance. But in electronics and electrical engineering, a solenoid is when we take a coil or an inductor and use it to move something. So in electronics, a solenoid is an electromagnetic actuator of some sort. So if we have, oh, for example, something very simple, let's put a piece of ferrous metal on a hinge, put a spring on it, and we want to move that, put a, there's an iron core with a coil of wire around it, energize that with a battery, and that's going to Pull that down, de-energize it, and it's going to let go and go back up. So the spring's going to pull it back up and down. So that's one kind of a, a hinged actuator. But a more common actuator with a solenoid is going to be a linear actuator. So what we do is we take our coil. Let's come in from the side here. Here's our coil of wire. And it's got you know some kind of a framework to hold it. And we have a plunger that's made of ferrous metal. Put a little ring on here so we can hold on to something. And so what's going to happen when we energize that? Doesn't really matter which polarity it is. And the direction of the magnetic field is going to depend on which way the current is flowing and which way the winding is wound. And so it could be either way. And if this is just simply ferrous metal, what's going to happen is when we energize it, it's going to pull that in. So I have an electromagnetic actuator that pulls something in. It's a linear actuator, which is typically solenoids work that way. Here's a picture of one working with just a 9-volt battery and pulls in the actuator, and there you go. We could also have 
an actuator that is polarized, it's magnetic. Now we could either pull or push. If we energize it one way, it's going to pull. If we flip the polarity, so one way it pulls in, flip the polarity, and it pushes out. Now, in electronics, we also have a device called a relay, which is simply a solenoid actuated switch. So here's a picture of a relay here. You can see the coil of wire, and you can see the uh, little reed switches in there. I'll just give a quick kind of a schematic drawing of that. Here's our coil of wire, and here is our switch, and there's one contact, here's the other contact. So there's our simple single pull, single throw relay. This would be on a spring. I'll just draw a spring here. And so when we energize the coil, which would probably have an iron core to increase its efficiency, we energize that coil, it's going to pull down the actuator, or the armature as it's called, and make contact. And then when we de-energize the coil, the spring is going to pull the armature back up and break contact. So that would be a simple single pull, single throw relay. But of course, we can do that with all manner of switches. Now, why would we do that? Well, a very common reason it would be in a car because we have a battery and a starter motor and a little starter switch. And these days, a little push button, but nevertheless, the starter switch can't handle a lot of current. But yet your starter motor is going to need 500, 600, 800. Uh, diesel might need 1,000 amps to crank that motor over. So what we do is we have our battery and a starter switch actuate a relay. And this battery, I'll just draw it this way, goes to the relay, which is usually called a solenoid in a car. Go figure. Uh, most of the often this would be called a relay, but it's a, called a solenoid in the car and because it is a solenoid. And this would go to your starter motor and back to your battery. So we have hundreds of amps here and just maybe an amp or so over here to operate the solenoid. So a little bit of current here causes a great big bit of current there sort of like a mechanical transistor in a way. So uh, that's very common, probably the most common use of a relay that you'll encounter. But we could also use a relay to have one switch operate many things. So a relay can have any kind of switch you can imagine. That was a single pull, single throw. It could have a single pull, double throw, multiple pulls, multiple throws. Here's a relay that has many, many contacts on it. It has a lot of double pull, double throw switches in there. So they're all ganged together, so one uh, current into the relay operates many, many switches. So there you have it. Solenoids and relays. Very simple, just electromagnets that actuate something. You can find solenoids all over the place. Next time you go to a vending machine, you can hear solenoids uh, operating the coin returns and sometimes even dispensing the product. Uh, sometimes they use motors too. We'll talk about them next. But uh, solenoids are everywhere. Uh, anywhere we need to operate things, uh, if a computer needs to control something, how are you going to do it? It's either going to turn on, turn off motors, or actuate solenoids. And then, of course, we have relays, which is a solenoid-operated switch. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe, because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible and a big thank you to everyone for watching.